What's up guys, Eternal here and today I'm gonna show you how to play Vayne. So let's start with Doran's Blade. I will play it against Farus and Leona with brown support. We want to start with Q first and let's get to his skill explanation. Solon passive Vayne gains 30 movement speed when moving toward nearby enemy champions. While the ultimate is active that bonus is triple to 90. Then Q short distance roll that causes Vayne next basic attack to deal bonus physical damage within 7 seconds. Q is an auto attack reset, so you need to keep that in mind. It really helps on lane while trading. Also when being close to the wall you can skip most part of the animation. Then W every third attack or ability against an enemy deals an additional percentage of the enemy's maximum health as true damage. So this is the reason why Vayne is so good at shredding tanks and dealing huge amount of damage. This makes her a late game monster as well. So let's give 5 hold attacks. And let's get to the lane. So it's important to do aura attack and then Q, that way you can smoothly make a nice trade and also help yourself last hitting with Q. Keep in mind that with Q your aura attack damage is increased and that's how you should be harassing your opponent. I tried to harass Leona a bit so that at level 2 to have a harder time engaging but I'm being pushed right now meaning that she wouldn't engage anyway especially at you through it using Q is helpful to get a successful last hit so now W and I'm playing silver bolts so usually you should be trading with silver bolts until you get third stack and then back. So vain excels in short duels. And if you switch target you will lose silver bolt stacks of the previous one so keep that in mind. So now with condemn there's a nice trick that you can do by doing O and Q and then E because your E can trigger third silver bolt stack so that way you can just damage your enemy without getting damage in return like this as you can see almost half HP just keep in mind that all combo costs 120 mana so that's a lot don't cast it too often better just using your Q efficiently with all attack so the moment I'm doing all attack I'm already pressing Q and that's a nice trade again. Currently the wave is in the right spot and I wish that our jungler was there because they are vulnerable to gank now. Vayne is a late game champion but of course that doesn't mean that she cannot kill someone on lane if you trade properly. Just this lane is difficult because of Leona, so it won't be that easy for me to randomly engage on Varus. We want to max W first, this is going to be an on hit build and W has great synergy with that, as it has no cooldown it's only up to you how many aura attacks you can apply. So by letting them push the wave, Leona is not able to harass me with her combo and I'm still waiting for my jungler. Because until the jungler comes I can only farm. And that's fine as well since I'll be able to reach late game faster. And yeah, Volibear is coming. Good engage by Bro, let's go on anything that is the closest. Getting her to that place should be enough. 
Hey, he had to flash. And that's fine. So that was condemned again and how exactly does it work? So you fire a bolt that deals a physical damage and knocks back target. And if the target collides with terrain, the damage is increased and the target is stunned for 1.5 seconds. As you can see when I'm using Q next to the wall, I'm skipping the animation. It's really helpful. Let's get boots and Vampire Scepter. With boots, maybe I'd be able to dodge Leona's ultimate. Of course, you can use Q for that, but attack speed is great stat on Vayne. And as for ultimate, on cast Vayne gains 20 bonus attack damage and for the duration of 8 seconds, when you cast Q, you become invisible and the duration of ultimate is extended by 4 seconds whenever a champion damaged by Vayne dies within 3 seconds. Let's trade like this again since I was full mana. In some matchups you can start with Donna Shield for example, when playing against something like maybe Jin and Brandt, something that offers a lot of poke in the game. In this matchup, not exactly. If you harass Leona in the game or let her push, this works against Thresh as well, anything that is based on engage. And I have nice CS lead, mainly because of the fact that I let them push. Not going on Varus, because I think it's a bait for Leona. Or not exactly. Anyway, it wasn't worth risking. I'm just fine like that, I will try to punish enemy whenever he tries to CS in my range. Oh, nice try. Let's go for ultimate. He has nothing, so... That's a... Uh, free gold. And as for ultimate, I recommend sometimes if you want to just reposition yourself cast Q and don't over attack for the full duration of your invisibility effect. Q works on the turret and I recommend standing close to the wall so you can just skip the animation as I said and that way it's better. Alright, we got some gold. This is fat and we need to keep in mind that Twisted Fate is in the game so you'll be able to reveal me during ultimate. And as for Condemn, there's a nice combo with Flash so you do Condemn and then Flash so that the animation starts tricking your enemy into thinking that you just misclicked and then you change the direction of your condemn with the flash. So you need to be fast but it's very effective. On gank for example, setting up the gank. I would go once again much deeper but I couldn't see Leona. Her ultimate is strong. Actually, yeah, I fought so. That's so bad. Oh, really? Okay, guys. <laughs> So 
So this is why I always flash first against Lee Sin, because he just wants to ult you, kick you in the right side and then he goes tricked. And first turret and Volibear somehow was able to take the Shrek alone that fast. I didn't expect that. So yeah, with Blade of the Ruined King your power spike hits and you are very strong, you can make much more aggressive plays. The next item that you wanna get is Phantom Dancer, it will help me surviving and also on the attack speed. So now I just need to stay with my support. Okay, Yona is on that side. I will stay in bush. Hopefully he will come for CS. If not, then it's fine. And he's not coming. And to last hit battle, just focus on the ranged minions first with Vayn. That way you won't miss. So let's pressure this side of the map since I cannot impact now. They will do Rift Herald. So we trade that hopefully for the turret. Brown is setting up vision but it's not necessary because I can see on the map that all enemies, at least most of them, are on different parts of the map. Now Lee is coming, but I really want this turret. We should be fast enough now without Twisted Fate. They cannot do much. Okay, time to back once more. So Phantom Dancer and Rage Blade next with addition of Magic Resist, building for QSS later. That will help me against Twisted Fate, Stun Card, for example, or Leona, generally anything. Also against Timo Shrooms, he has Dark Harvest, so his Shrooms will hurt me a lot. This is going to be annoying later. And I recommend saving your ultimate until it's really necessary, because as for ultimate, Sometimes you just cast out for that additional attack damage that can make a difference between getting a kill or not. Sometimes just for movement speed when chasing. And in the team fight, as I said, to reposition yourself, get back into safety. Maybe I might need to calculate because TF out. Oh, let's keep farming. So I could con them, but I preferred to go for brown stun passive. It was easier to connect. I mean, he could have flashed. And that way it's only about basic attacks. Let's focus on objective. More CS for me. I shouldn't follow, let's just go for another turret. 
Why would I risk even if I kill them all? Why not just go for free threat? That's how you gain true lead. Not risking too much. Maybe that playstyle is not that much interesting, but it's effective. And red buff as well. Just gathering as much gold as I can for my items for that final team fight where I just shred my opponents. Yeah, at least the stop the Drake. Let's wait for Volibear. So at least it's going to be 50 50. Yeah, he's going up here. I actually got to flash. Now it's better. Smart fighting, not going in to Italy. This is the key. Should we go for Baron now or for the turret? It seems like we won't go for anything this time. Maybe that's too early. But since their respawn timer is low, there is no point. So maybe let's set up vision for Baron. Uh, I just finished my Rage Blade. And that's another power spike, really good. Overall, Vayne is great for objectives because you can imagine Blade of Drinking and W Synergy shredding that percentage health. Should come as five. Should play on that side of the map now. Cause there's no Drake and there's Baron, so I'm just gonna ping for my teammates. And Timo Shroom. Actually, can we try? see how fast it goes with them. They don't even realize. They lack like vision there. So now we can go for the top lane. Since there are no tier 2 threats, let's just go for the wave that is the closest. So my team should do fine. I let Brown check that. Actually, they are not on that side. So, there's no one to answer that. I'm going again. Shredding their base. Should we stay? Why not? Okay, that's enough. Now from this side. Just macro game. I used to play more about team fighting when I played Creed Vein, but this on hit one works better in that playstyle of just gathering resources. Okay, 
not worth staying there. And they surrender, so thank you guys for watching, hope that you learned something out playing, leave a like, subscribe and see you next time.